In today's show, we're going to learn about the new Power App Search Pane. So the Search Pane is a new functionality that allows you to search within your code. Yes, right, for variables, functions, all that. So we're going to get a first-hand look at how to use that. And then more importantly, we're going to turn about, talk about how to turn it on in your existing apps. Because let's face it, even though new apps get it, where you really want it is that big, complicated app you're trying to troubleshoot. So that's what we're going to talk about. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys, and today we're gonna to talk about the Power App Search Pane. Right, this lovely new feature that we've wanted forever is finally here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how to turn it on, even though it's on on new apps, right? We gotta turn it on on those old apps. And then we're gonna talk about just the way it works, what it does and doesn't find, and try to get you using this tool. Because I think for troubleshooting people, right, this is like a super important thing to have in your apps because we couldn't do any of this in the past. And I think it's a big deal. So that's why I want to go through all this with you guys. Also, at the end, I'm going to give you a little special announcement. So make sure you're at the end or just fast forward right down in the descriptions, all the video tags anyway. Um, but jump out there and make sure you check out what I got coming up. So let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so first over here on my desktop, we're going to start with a brand new app, right? I just created the app this morning and I just put a bunch of random garbage in it because I think the garbage is going to help us understand what, what's going on here. But so hopefully you've noticed already over in your new apps, if you look over here on the left, you see the little hourglass or hourglass looking glass, right? And so if you click on this search, this allows you to search within your app. And so this is going to search, I don't want to say everything, but just about everything, right? So it's going to search your screens, it's going to search your variables, your data sources, your flows, your media, uh, your components, like basically everything you can think of. I'll, we'll show you one example of something that's not in there though later. But so with the search, for example, if I'm like, hey, I want to search for the word test, right? So if we search for test, oh my goodness, you know, there is basically one of everything, and that's on purpose, right? But the idea here is that it breaks them out into sections. So maybe you're looking for test, but you only want to find uh, the test data sources, right? So if you hit the drop down here, you can say filter out my results and only see the data sources. So you can see I have two search data sources there. Pretty cool. And we can go further though. So you notice this one is security space test, whereas this one is a lot of test all shoved together. So I could go down here and say, hey, I want to match the whole word. If I change this search option, then I literally only get that one um, result back. So it can get very specific. If I got into matching case as well, then it's not going to find anything. So we're going to talk more about these in a minute, but be careful with your search options, right? And just leave them all unchecked to kind of get started. We deselect data. Look at this, it smartly reselects all. And so looking over here, you're going to see that we've got the variables. It break, breaks them out between global and context. If I choose one of these, if I click on like this global variable, it actually takes me to the variable screen where I can look at the definitions, the uses, the indirect usages, all of that. So that's kind of fun. Um, if we go right, the same would happen for context. Collections. So this has always been one of those things that we've always struggled with, right? Like as in larger apps, trying to find all the places that you declare a collection. So now I know that there is a collection called cold test collection, right? And if I want to figure out that everywhere that it is in here, so we know if I click this, it goes to the old collection screen. This doesn't help. It'll show me what's in there, but it's not going to show me um, where it's defined, like variables do, boo. But watch, so look, cold test collection. So now if we just go back up here and change this to cold test collection, look at how smart it is. So not only is it going to show us the collection, but it says that really on the silly test screen in drop down one, on the on change property, right? Think about how hidden that is. How hard would that be to find if you didn't know where it was? That is where the function collect cold test collection is. And if we click on it, it would actually zip us right there. This, this might be my favorite part of this, right? Is this ability to hunt down collections because <laughs> we've struggled with that for so long. Um, I was helping somebody with this just yesterday. You know how we ended up solving the problem for her? I told her how to turn this on and that's why I'm making this video. And then she was able to find it in like 30 seconds. So Carla, you kind of inspired this. So let's see, let's back this back out to test again, just because we're seeing more there. Oh, no results found. Uh, back to, oh, okay, I misspelled the word test. Oh, it, it can't help my bad spelling. So we've talked about variables. We got collections. The data sources are here. So the media, so you can see there's a file called Chewy Hug Test. So it shows us our media. It shows us our flows. So it's checking your flow names. Very nice. 
Um, and then, of course, you know, if we go down here to components, it even gets into the components. And it's not only is it catching that my component was named header test, but inside my component, there was a icon called icon test, right? So all the way down the rabbit hole, it is looking everywhere. It's so impressive that it does that. So then it starts going screen by screen. So in this drop down here, you can see that you can choose screens and that's what we're about to go through, but you can't say, hey, only show me the places this is used in a function or in a formula, you know, or only for a control name. So if you wanted to do that, you didn't only search for the screens and then that'll filter out everything. But now, you know, by choosing screens here, it's not just looking at screen names, it is looking on all those screens for your value. And so that's where you can see, you know, on screen two, I had it I used it to set a variable, so it's in a function. On this screen, I'm using the uh, the image uh, Chewy Hug test, so that's what's causing that one. Um, this one, this one's really neat. This was a fun one I tested. So in my label, I have the word test, right? This is a simple label where I just typed in test. Look at that. It found that because from its perspective, test is in the function, right? So I thought that was really cool. Now. What it doesn't do, just so we're all on the same page, right? And I don't think it should do this, but I just want to point out one of the things I did find it doesn't do, is if we go over here to a silly test screen. So I have a button here that sets a variable to whatever's in the text input. And so if the person types in the word test, right? This text input's default is blank. But if a person types in, you know, my test, and we press this button, yes, inside the variable is the word test but it is not going to find that, right? So I just wanted to point that out. I, I don't think that it should. I don't think that this is a flaw, but I can see where you might get confused. So you can't check like the inside of a data source. You can't check the inside of a collection. You can't check the inside of a variable for this value. It's only things that you've done with formulas and functions that it's going to check. So just a little caveat there as you're, as you're thinking about this one. Um, but yeah, so, you know, other than that though, Everywhere that I could imagine that it would show up, it absolutely shows up. Um, keep in mind, you know, up here at the top, you can use refresh. So if you had made a bunch of changes, they weren't showing up in your search results. So far, every change I've made has showed up in the research results without me having to hit refresh, but it is there as well. Now, if we clear this out, so what if you're in here, and so I like, say you're doing responsive, you're like, hey, I'm looking for all the height and width, right? So you're like, all right, well, if I start to type in height, so I can see all the heights in the app, right? There's a lot, obviously. But like I can't say height or width, and I have to spell width correctly, not white, weight. That doesn't work, right? So you're like, boo. That's okay. You can do what you want. What you have to do here though, so let's type in height, kind of get started. If you hit the drop down here, so we talked about match case, right? So case sensitive, we talked about match the whole word only. And then we also down here at the bottom, we have use regex. And so the use regex, right? Regex, or, it's called regular expressions, a fancy way, but we all call it regex, right? It's, it's one of those things I mentioned in the last video, I hate regex, I don't understand regex, whatever it is, my life. But if you use regex, the most common one that you guys might wanna check out is you can go up here and be like, hey, I want height bar, so the, the pipe um, width. And so then now, look at that, it is getting all of the places where width or height is being used. And it's not matching exact, right? I didn't tell it to match, um, Case, so it's not hitting that. If I wanted to, I could turn that on. No, that's not gonna match anything. If I say match whole word, now we're only getting the places where it is actually in there um, the same. So just keep that in mind, right? Height and width, um, and this use retro, retro expression. So you're just gonna separate the terms um, using the, the vertical, the pipe, whatever you would call that, right? The shift above the backslash. Um, so I thought that was interesting. I will put a link down below, right, to um, this documentation. This attempts to explain regex. Like, I kind of understood regex, and I read this, and I thought I understood it less. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, I've always struggled with regex. So don't, don't feel bad if you do. But, man, you can do some really complicated stuff in here once you bite that bullet. I have personally not chosen to uh, get into that, though. So there's a lot here. The docs below. Check it out if you want to uh, look at that. But... I, you know, I, I don't have a lot of scenarios where I just, I think that or one is really the only one that we're after. Now, another question you might be asking yourself about this is, okay, so I found all that places where that variable is used, that collection is used. I want to do like a bulk rename. 
There is not a bulk rename, right? So I can't go in here and be like, hey, find me that collection. I remember, so let's search for collection. Oh, we'll change this to say, get rid of all those. And make sure you don't leave those checked because it's confusing if you do. And so there's my collection, right? But there isn't a way to like right click on this and say, you know, rename all instances or anything like that. So, so you would still have to go find all of them and change them if you were trying to rename this collection. Now there is a find and replace these days if in your formula bars, right? You can use this find and replace, but that's only gonna do the find and replace within this particular um, formula bar. So it's not gonna do global. This find and replace is just for updating this one. So if you're using cold test collection in here in 17 places and you want to change it in here or in this particular formula in 17 places at once, that find and replace would work. But this find and replace is not in anything in conjunction with this, uh, the search pane as we're calling this over here on the left, okay? Um, so the other thing that you probably ask yourself, like Shane, that's super exciting, right? So if I create a new app, this is just here. But you know, over here, like we've got this lovely app, right? This is my favorite app I've ever built. Um, and where, how in this particular app do we have it, right? Because we don't have the search pane over here. Womp, womp, this app's like four years old. Well, the reason for that is that you have to turn it on. So if you go up here to settings and you go to upcoming features and then on preview down at the very bottom, this is where you can do things like turn on the search panel or turn on that power automate pane that's now showing up in your new apps as well, right? So you can turn these on for old ones. Now keep in mind, right? When it comes to upcoming features, the way that I teach it in my training classes, right, is that preview features, they're okay, right? You can turn these on, especially if you go and look and see what preview features are already turned on if you've created a new app today. If they're on in a new app today, Microsoft feels really good that those features are in a great place. So since the search pane is turned on on a brand new app I created this morning, I feel comfortable turning it on in an old app. Now you always wanna read the fine print, it can change things, it can do stuff that you might not want, um, but overall, I feel good about using it, okay? The experimental, the retired, we're not gonna talk about them today, but just keep in mind that I try to avoid, if at all possible, turning on experimental or retired features because retired is going away, so you won't want those. But there are scenarios where I do, but for the most part, you don't want those. But experimental, man, those are in a state that they might change, they might like get completely deprecated one afternoon, they might be 100% different. The experimental ones, you do not want those in production apps. So just stay away from those. But in this app, right, we do okay with this preview and this search feature in this case. We turn it on, and as fast as we turn it on, there it is. And so now if I wanted to figure out like what collections am I using here, or you know, where, where do I use the word collection? So I got expense collection. You can see that I am then, man, that thing is being used all over the place. So it's in this formula, it's in all these formulas. So I, I, and so now I would have a true way in a very large multi-screen complex app with a lot of logic, a lot of data sources to really find all the places. And that's it, right? Search pane, pretty cool. I, I, I'm really digging it. Like I said, it literally helped two people yesterday. And that's why I was like, all right, stop, make the video, put it out there for these people. So the last thing is I promise you guys an announcement. And the announcement is, is that we're about to launch Power Platform University over here at Power Apps 911. So the idea of Power Platform University is to take my new to new and beginner learners and give them a structured six month process that will get them from, you know, I'm kind of faking it until I'm making it here. I'm kind of just figuring things out on my own to fully working in the platform, right? Power Platform University includes a mentor, right? So you will be assigned a mentor who will be with you throughout the whole process. Um, it has not only on-demand content, it has several live learning sessions where we're going to teach some of the softer skills like business analyst, project management, branding, troubleshooting, some of those non-technical skills. We're going to talk about all that. And then finally, it also has three exams, right? One of them is a practical hands-on one. We're going to have a requirement doc. You're going to get to interview the business owner, and then you're going to have to build the solution based on the, what the customer needs, right? Very, very reality-based, what we do both for customers today, internal and external. Then we're gonna have a troubleshooting module where you're gonna get a broken app and a broken flow and you're going to have to fix both of those um, to pass those. And then there is a real test, uh, so a multi-choice test. And if you pass all that, then you will be uh, labeled a Power Apps 911 certified power platform maker. I don't know, something like that. I forget the exact wording, but some, some fancy new title we're, we're giving out. 
Um, so yeah, the course covers Power Apps Canvas Apps, um, Power Automate Cloud Flows, it covers Power BI Reports, and then it also has a bunch of exposure to things like model-driven apps and PVA and all a bunch of other stuff. So really try to kind of round it all out and get you exposed to everything in the Power Platform seeming more effective. So if you want more information on that, look up above. There is a link somewhere to our Coming Soon page. Um, either you can fill out the Coming Soon page, or if I'm really lucky and we work really hard this week, by the time you see this video, the Coming Soon page will just have a nice link to it that says, sign up here because we're already past the Coming Soon page part. But we'll see what happens this week. All right, anyway, with that, I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day. Hey, me again. Before you go, click on the subscribe button, right? Join the list of 100,000 plus people that have subscribed already. Or if you need any help, right? Check us out at Power Apps 901. We do big projects, little projects. We do training. We do everything and we can help you. Or if you want to see more videos, you probably do, then just click on the playlist above. Cool? Thanks and have a great day.